All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, what is it? Thirty second to last day of the month. Uh, love, oh, good morning. Who's coming in there? We got Preeti. Good morning. All right. Today, uh, I want to say again, it's not the opposite of Monday, but Monday we did the chest, biceps, triceps. We have a weight distribution, dynamic legs, the dynamic, right, the multi-joint, multi-muscle activation uh, exercises. You have the choice of lunges and squats. So uh, today is going to be shoulders and back. The rhythm is going to be a little different because we're going to do smaller circuits and do more circuits. Uh, but we'll have the opposite right. We'll have quads, glutes, calves, we're going to have back and shoulders. Uh, so don't get me wrong, we have a lot of work to do, but I would say Monday was probably harder, but it wasn't even high intensity. So uh, probably still moderate, low intensity. Uh, so let's get to work. Uh, we have our warm up loop to do. We've got to get the hips and the knees and the shoulders and the things warm and loose. We're going to start with our 10 standing scissors. You got the legs straight, arms straight, torque, leverage, lengthening your posterior muscles. You got your hamstrings, glutes, lower back, middle back, upper back. You got your triceps and your calves, right? All those things get lengthened a little bit on your standing scissors. You're then going to go right into your standing runners, which is a mobility exercise. Didn't say go fast, but let's definitely get the the pace turned up a notch. 10 standing runners. We have done these things many, many, many times. 10 jack lanes. That is your dynamic stretching, whereas the stiff legged deadlifts is a dynamic lengthening. I know you've heard a lot. They are technically different, even though they might feel very similar. 10 jack the lanes, you're going to take a big deep breath and stand tall for those jack the lanes. And we're going to do that loop again. And we have three consecutive loops. We're not going to go faster, but I don't mind incorporating that pace, which is associated to rest, right? Ten standing scissors for the second time. Hamstrings, loops, lower back, middle back. Your shoulder joint and hip joint has the motion. Then you're going to go right into those standing runners, 10 standing runners, mobility of hips and spine and knees and ankles. You got rotation, activation. You're going to start feeling that heart rate increase, the skin getting warm. You're going to have those jack lanes for the second time. You breathe as you do your jack lanes. Hamstrings stretching more, not lengthening. Glutes stretching more. You gotta get big, you gotta get tall on those jack lanes. After you get done with those jack lanes, shake it off. We have one more loop of those things. Ten standing scissors, optionally the last time you do those today. <clears throat> Again, the rhythm is gonna feel a little different from Monday because how I put the circuits together, but. Outside of that, good old fashioned route. 10 standing scissors, 10 standing runners. Again, option in the last time we'll do it today. Breathe and focus on those standing runners. And for me, they always just make me feel warmer, even though there's not that much muscle going on. 10 jack lalangs. Again, optionally the last time that's it. Hamstrings, glutes, back muscles, getting big on your jack, the lanes. When you get done with those, let's go through those squats real quick. Just so I want to be a little bit warmer. You're going to do the 10 regular squats, the 10 wide squats, the 10 narrow squat. Shake it off. Let's do that three times. Ready? Let's go. Hips, glutes, eyes, thighs, posture, breathe. Regular squats is just a general position. Your feet are about shoulder width apart. It's a great baseline so you can compare your motions with the regular squat, wide squat, narrow squat. 10 regular squats, 10 wide squats. You got the flexibility. Remember, if you maintain or increase motion, you're going to feel those muscles around your hips lengthen more on your 10 
wide squats. Hips, right down those hips moving. Glutes turning on. We're going to need those glutes turning on today. Posture and breathe. Narrow squats. Ten narrow squats. Again, if you maintain motion or increase motion, it's a mobility squat. Your joints need or have to move a little bit more on a narrow squat. Again, if you maintain the motion compared to your regular squat. Narrow squats is an easy one to lose motion on. When you get down to those 10 narrow squats, shake it off. Let's do another loop. We have three total loops, and that'll be the end of our warm-up. You got your 10 regular squats, hips, right? Those toes, they should always be able to wiggle. I don't want your toes up. I don't want you directly on your heels. But as you get the hips back, that weight displaces back, so it might kind of feel like you're on your heels. 10 regular squats. Wide squats. When you do it for the second time, maybe it's just a little bit wider. Maybe your toes, your feet angle out a little bit more on your wide squat. Flexibility. Those muscles around your hips can lengthen more on a wide squat. Breathe. Focus. Remember, I'm going to be a little bit ahead of you, nudging that pace. Ten narrow squats. Don't be surprised if those legs are going to burn just a tiny bit. I know you guys are so strong and so used to load, but you're going to be doing 90 consecutive legs with the three narrow squats three times. Ten narrow squats. Remember, you don't have to have your feet touching, and I really don't want your feet touching. However, your feet are pretty narrow. Toes are pointed straight out in front of you. Hips, booty, eyes, thighs. One more loop, and we'll be done in this warm-up. Ten regular squats. Heart rates increased a tiny bit. You might feel yourself breathing right a little bit more. Please make sure you breathe in. It's easy to breathe out. Ten regular squats. Legs burn a tiny bit. Ten wide squats. Again, you're not going to be squatting today, per se, but I wanted those muscles turned on and joints ready to move. Ten wide squats. Breathe. Focus. Flexibility. You have one more 10 narrow squats. We are going to be doing quads here in a little bit, and narrow squats is always an option. However, we'll I'll give you the choices when we get there on your quad exercises. Breathe and focus and work. Remember, the rhythm is going to be a little different. As you're finishing off those 10 narrow squats, I'm going to talk about the circuits. We have a, more circuits today because we're doing two set circuits, which are also known as simple circuits. They can be mentally complex or, or overall numerically challenging, but you're going to do two set circuits. And like I said on Monday, all leg exercises are going to be 20 reps, blah, 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 boring, boring, boring. Circuit one, again, I forgot to bring down my light dumbbells. I try to limit my tools like you guys are limited. We're going to do our three different shoulders twice. So this first circuit is going to be very numerically similar to what we did with our biceps and triceps on Monday. I'm going to go through that here in a second. We're going to go through our calves. So the nice thing about circuit one, fairly short, fairly sweet. We have a couple changes on our shoulders and you can adjust the weight as you need to. When you're ready. Again, I don't have dumbbells. I'm going to do mine without dumbbells. If you have light dumbbells, please use them. 15 arms straight, thumbs up, front raises. I literally want your thumbs up, okay? 15, and then I'll talk about the calves again here in a second. Your calves are always gonna be 20, but I'll show you the different feet positions and body positions on your calves. We'll have five sets of 20 calves. 15 arms straight, thumbs up, front raises, and like Monday, we have a 15 and an 8. I'm going to change it to a 15 and an 8. You're here. I got you. After the 15, you've got 20 calves. Remember, 
You can hold weight or not. I would love it if you did. You can have your feet super narrow. You can have your feet super wide. You can play with your feet with. You can play with toes in and toes out. You can do straight legged calves and you can do seated calves, which does incorporate that wall set, right? So I'm gonna let you pick and choose and diversify your calves as you wish. I'm gonna lead you through the shoulders. Okay, so if you're keeping up with me, fine. Just remember, I'm not doing all the reps. That's your workout, right? Round one, 15 thumbs up, arm straight front raises, and then you'll do 20 calves. Remember, you could play with where the weight is, how much weight you're using, whether you're standing on the side of a bench, uh, two by four, plate, treadmill, stairs, you can stand on something or not. You can have your feet wide, narrow, regular, toes in, toes out. I know it sounds like there's a lot. Round two, eight thumbs up, arms straight, front raises. Again, as you see, I don't have dumbbells. I would love it if you did have dumbbells. That's on me for not bringing down the lighter dumbbells. But if you do only have a one weight, like a 35 pound dumbbell, you could hold that 35 pound dumbbell or 20 pound dumbbell or your cat and do a front raise. The downsize, the other shoulders require different weights. Round two, eight front raises. And then again, you're on your calves, 20 calves. Always 20 calves. Remember, I told you the rhythm is gonna feel a little different. If you get a little ahead of me, just slow your motions down a little bit. If you can diversify those calves, stand on something or not, hold a whole bunch of weight or not. You could even move the weight around. One hand could have it like we did on Monday and you can mix your hands up. Toes in, toes out. You have all these different angles, right? Different positions for the aesthetics of your calves. Oh, air ball. Little air ball there. So play around your feet. Round three, lateral raises, 15 lateral raises. Your elbow is ever so slightly bent. Don't bend and straighten your elbow, but your elbow is slightly bent. Your thumbs are pretty much pointed in front of you, right? Get a thumb thing. Remember the thumb thing is to give you a better chance of getting your deltoids. Your upper traps are here. Your deltoids are on your shoulders. You've got your spinatus muscles on your shoulder blades, right? We got our teres major, teres minor. We got our biceps and our triceps. There's a lot going on in the area. So the thumb thing helps you get your deltoids. Round three is that 15 lateral raise. And remember you're on your 20 calves. Leg straight calves is your gastroc, the bubble, the one you can see. Seated calves is your soleus. It's the underneath calf muscle. It's probably more functional per se than your gastroc. It helps you with biking, and it helps you with hiking, and it helps support load when you plant, right? So a lot of times when you see an athlete go down to the calf thing, right, your gastroc will cramp, your soleus will be the one that actually tweaks. And then those two come together, and guess what? That forms your Achilles tendon. So your calves connect to your Achilles. Your Achilles goes under your heel, are you guys done with the education? <laughs> Round four, eight lateral raises. Eight. So very simple circuit, right? We've simplified the brain cells a little bit. We're not doing a whole bunch of different movements. Eight lateral raises, maybe heavier, maybe not. It'll be your fourth set of your 20 calves. I promise you there's a lot of work coming your way, so don't be deterred by the pace. Remember those calves. I know I'm being corny, but I'm highlighting the muscle of calves. Play around with your feet. Play around with the weight. Monday, we did a bunch of weight distribution exercises intentionally, right? 
We had a right-handed circuit. We had a left-handed circuit. And then you had a bunch of different things to do. 20 calves. Feet wide, feet narrow, toes in, toes out, legs straight, knees bent. Maybe you're elevated up on something, maybe you're not. Round four is the eight shoulders, 20 calves. Round five is not your last shoulders, but of your last calves. Get low, stay low. Thumbs are pointed down. Your arms are almost perfectly straight. I don't want you to bend and straighten your arms as a tricep exercise, okay? 15 rear delt raises. You'll do your last set of 20 calves, and then you'll do your eight rear delt raises. Now remember, I don't want you to use your arm muscles. So whatever you need to do with your arms and make it a shoulder joint motion exercise, that is your deltoids. If your arms bend and straighten at all, it's gonna be your triceps. 15 rear delt raises, and then 20 on your calves for the last time today. Easy breeze, baby. It's a nice, good, simple, effective circuit. A couple circuits to do today, so it might feel like you're doing more than Monday, but it'll be about the same, so we do it differently. Yeah, round five, 15 real that rear dead real rear delt raises. And then 20 on your calves for the last time. And then remember you have the eight rear delt raises. And that'll end your circuit. My intent today is that we get two or even three circuits of shoulders. Whoa. We have a lat circuit and we have a trap circuit. We have calves. We've got quads, we've got glutes, we've got obliques, we've got abs. <laughs> it's been a lot today. Round six, there's no caps. Eight rear delt raises. When you get done with your eight rear delt raises, we're gonna do our first set of obliques. We're gonna do obliques between each circuit. So if we do five circuits, you're potentially gonna do five sets of your obliques. Standing, left hand has it. You've done this before. 30, right oblique. Standing is preferred because I know what's coming. And then you'll do your 30, left oblique. And if we do this five times today, it'll accumulate 150 each side obliques. And that'll be all done between the circuits. As you can tell, right? brain rests a little bit, my brain relaxes a little bit. I think you guys all saw the email, right? The excitement moving forward. I like to educate, I love to educate the why. You can always push mute if you want to. 30 on one side and then 30 on the other side. And if you know me well, we're gonna do our five different obliques today. We have to repeat one of them because Technically, most people don't have a cable for rotations, and most people don't have a hyperextension machine at home. 30 right obliques, and then 30 left obliques. And then we get to move on to bigger and better things. Of course, I want you to get your workout in 30 each side obliques. Let's just make it easy math. Two seconds per rep. That'd be 60 seconds each side, so there's two minutes of obliques. Five times a day, it's about 10 minutes of obliques. Hmm. As you finish off your obliques, I'm gonna talk about the next circuit. Again, I wanna use the word simple. Simple doesn't mean fast. You're gonna do our trap rows, and it's gonna be 30 down by five, which we did last week. 30 down by five on your trap rows. Your quads are always 20. You can do stationary forward lunges if you want to. I do want light or no weight for a touch of pace, a touch of pace. You can do narrow squats if you want to. And remember, you can sit on something and do your iso quads. 
and that is in that V up position, but you're not doing V ups. Okay? Now, here's the deal do not go fast, and if you don't have a ton of weight, when you get to 15, you can do 15 each side rows if you need to. Huh? What? I'll tell you more when we get there. Round one, 30 trap rows, which we've done before. I've talked to you guys about the 30s and the 25s and the numbers. When you do 30 and 25, it's all about muscle endurance. Can that muscle last? I also use it to get everything turned on, get everything burning, right? Get those muscles activated. So when you do get to your lower reps, you're able to turn them on easier. You can use them more. You can go heavier, blah, 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 blah. 30 trap rows. If you don't have a lot of weight, remember time is a factor. So when you get to your lower reps, we can either slow it down a little more or you could do each side so we could focus on holding more weight if we can. Round one, 30 rows. Always 20 quads. It's a great time to rest your hands. Remember Monday how your hands got tired? So stationary forward lunges. Remember I used the word pace. I didn't say tempo. You could do narrow squats or you could do iso quads. And I didn't mention it earlier, but if you were going to do iso quads the whole time and you have the ability to have ankle weights on, so be it. Always 20 quads. So the circuit is yours, right? I don't want you going too fast. Don't get too far ahead of me. But I want you to go at your pace, which is only associated with rest. Okay? 30 rows, 20 quads. We'll do 25 rows, 20 quads. 20 rows, 20 quads, right? You can do stationary forward lunges, narrow squats, Iso quads, always 20. Remember, it's a great time to rest your hands so you can focus on your shoulders and now your trap back muscles and later on with more things to do. When you get there, round two is 25 rows. Get low, stay low, row. Minimal hands. I am holding the weight, I'm not gripping the weight. When you grip the weight, your forearm muscles get really tight because they have to, right? And then your biceps and triceps start engaging, and then all you do is get your wrists and your elbows and your shoulder joint. If you can hold the weight, your arms can relax a little bit more, and then your shoulder blades can move a lot more. Don't rest, right? Don't rest. Make sure your tempo is moderate low, right? The tempo, two and a half to three second reps. We're not in a hurry. We're gonna get a lot of work done because of how we can do the circuits. Partly, we're not gonna get up and down a million times. That's helpful. Round three, uh, two is a 25 trap rows. Always 20. You don't have to lunge, right? Stationary forward lunge is an option. Squat, narrow squat. You can do it if you want to. It's an option. Narrow squats. And remember, you can sit on something and do your iso quads. Iso is a position, right? Isometric core, not moving contraction. And then you have your quad extension. Whether you have an ankle weight, ankle weight, or a dumbbell between your feet, my knees stay in one spot. You can hold what you're sitting on. You can hold your legs up. But there's your isometric ab core. And there's your quad extension. Always 20. Round three. I'm not saying you should be there. But when you get to round three, it's 20 trap rows. Remember, we do these numbers for a reason. Burn it, burn it, burn it, and then get going. Round three, 20 trap rows. When you get to the 15 and you have to hold two dumbbells, you can do 15 each side rows. It just takes a little longer. 
which is why I don't have you do it, take it 15, 20 each side, although doable, it really adds duration, and I have a lot more circuits to do. 20 track rows, position doesn't change, mindset doesn't change, maybe the weight changes, your tempo, right, time under tension, two and a half to three second reps, that's that load, right, weight, physical weight, or time. Always 20 quads. So of course it might feel like you have a little heart rate, a little bit of a burn, trap rows burn, quad extensions burn. Breathe, focus, back and quads happening right now. Work, work, work. Round three, 20 trap rows. Always 20 on your quads. Hips, 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 hips. If you're doing narrow squats and stationary forward lunges, your hips still need to be involved, which means your glutes are still gonna turn on. And then make sure you think about your quads working more. Your iso quads, your hips are not moving, but you have the isometric ab core hip position, and you have that quad extension. Round four, remember, if you don't have the ability to increase the weight dramatically, you can hold as much weight as you can hold in one hand. Sometimes that involves the only two weights you have. You've got your 15 rows, you can do 15 each side, one arm rows if you want to. It does slow you down a little bit, but that's okay. This is your workout. 15 trap rows, and then you're gonna be on your fourth set of your quads. Remember, it's okay if you don't want to increase the physical weight and you don't want to do the one arm rows. Is that word time under tension, tut, right? It's part of that load, slowing it down just a touch. And of course, Sunshine did stop by and get a 35 pound kettlebell. He might want to entertain doing 15 inch side rows or next round would be 10 inch side rows, right? <laughs> I can't help myself. Always 20. The easy thing is doing what you know best. Stationary forward lunge, narrow squat, but we don't do it very much. The iso quad position potentially is the most quads. It's a single joint exercise, so you're not gonna use other muscles. The kicker is the position and the focus. You have to focus a little more on the isometric quads. And of course, maybe you have the ankle weights or ankle weight or a dumbbell between your feet. Quad extensions, always 20. A little breathing, a little working, a little focus. And of course, we're getting close to the end of the circuit. Round five is your 10 rows. It can be 10 each side if you want it. And then you're going to have your last quads of the day. Remember, I wasn't worried about what you did, right? We have plenty of work to do. You've got your 10 rows and then your last 20 quads. And it can be 10 each side. It just takes a little bit longer and that's okay. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Focus on you your work, your Wednesday workout. And unfortunately, I think tomorrow the only time I can do is the noon class. But I think it'd be fun to promote and talk about at the last workout of the year, noon on New Year's Eve. Hopefully we get some people going. Just a nice, fun last workout of the year. Friday we'll do a 9 a.m. and noon class, the first workout of the year. Right, you might as well. Last set of your quads after you do your 10 rows. Remember, it's okay if you're a little ahead of me. 
You're doing it because of your pace, which is lack of rest or more rest, right? Tempo, two and a half to three second reps. It depends on the exercise you're doing. Iso quads is a position challenge, right? You gotta focus on the position. It could be a shorter exercise. Stationary forward lunges would probably be the longest motion, right? I said the longest motion. Narrow squats could kind of be right in the middle. And maybe you held weight, maybe you didn't, but it's a great way to rest your hands. After those last set of quads, remember you do have five rows, and that can be five each side rows or just your five rows. I'm not trying to push the pace too much, but when you get done with your five rows, we are gonna be on the ground for the next different oblique. Your second set of obliques when you get done with your five rows. Remember, take your time, this is your workout. When you get done with your five rows, you're on the ground, double lateral leg lifts, 30 each side. When you do double lateral leg lifts, your upper body is your foundation. So your upper body doesn't move and you need to have a nice good base. Your lower body is moving, double both legs, lateral leg lifts, 30 each side. The up side is the working side. The right side up makes it a right oblique exercise and the left side up makes it a left oblique exercise. And it potentially is the most loaded oblique, right? You're at home. Standing loaded obliques could be also a loaded one if you had plenty of weight. But I imagine most of you don't have a 60 pound weight or more, right? Double lateral leg lifts. Your oblique is pulling a lot of load. And that is actually physical weight. 30 each side, double. Both legs, lateral leg lifts. Yes, have a little fun. Have a little bit of fun. 30, each side, nice strong base. You are not perfectly square to the ground. That just goes to your internal oblique and your external spine and your lats, right? You lose that motion. You have that small body angle. You fall back a tiny, tiny bit, and that'll help get your obliques. It's probably the biggest thing I see when people do obliques and they lay down, is they try to stay so perpendicular to the ground, and then they start slowly falling forward, and then it just makes it a glute, lat, external spine, a right back exercise, which is okay if that's your intent. It normally doesn't feel very good. Yes, 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 yes. When you get done, I want to just, just turn the dial up just the tiniest bit. We're going to do our shoulder presses, and our shoulder presses are going to have a different number set versus the rows, but I still want the burn. We're going to get rid of the 30, and we're just going to do the 25 down by 5 because we've already been burning, we have plenty of work to do. And again, I wanna add just a little bit of movement, right? We're gonna do some agility or plyometrics. I just wanna wake up your body a little bit. When that next circuit's done, we're gonna be on the ground for a different oblique, and we're gonna be on the ground for our lats and our glutes. But anyhow, let's get to work. 25 down by five shoulder presses. You can sit tall or stand tall on your shoulder presses. All I did was get rid of the 30, so the duration of the circuit isn't that long, okay? Your combo, like I've said, is all 20. You can do agility, you can do plyometrics, you can do mobility, and these things should resonate very good with you. So let's call this a wake up circuit. 25 down by five shoulder presses, sitting tall or standing tall, and then always 20 exertion. It could be agility based, plyometric based, or mobility based. And let's add a touch of pace. Let's maintain that moderate low tempo on the lifting. But when you get to your exertion, right, tempo can increase. High knees, 
Remember, it's not running in place, it's high knees, butt kicks. That's a good choice too, right? Again, uh, exertion, right? You have revolutions if you're running for momentum and you have walking reps uh, for exertion, right? Jumping jacks, walking jacks. You've got your taps, higher, harder, slower reps, lower, quicker, easier revolutions. You've got ski hops, right? All those things that talk about agility, plyometrics, jump squats, split jumps, burpees, lateral bench hops, skater hops. And remember, you have your mobility, standing scissors, standing runners, and jack the lanes. Let's wake up a little bit, you guys. Shoulders, 25 down by five. Don't wait for me. Always 20 on your exertion. That doesn't take very long. And then now you know why I didn't need the third. 25 shoulders, 20 exertion, and then 20 shoulders, and you got a nice burn already going. The rest is lower on your exertion than it was on your quad exercises earlier. Sitting tall or standing tall on your shoulder press. So this circuit's gonna be quick. I don't want your lifting fast. I want your pace moderate high. Round two, 20 shoulders, 20 exertion. I talked a lot about agility earlier. Remember, agility is quicker, quieter, shorter, sweeter, and normally revolutions. There is some power created. You displace a little bit of load, and of course you have some impact, but it's all relative to what you can handle. Plyometrics, right? You have more power being created. You're moving your load a little bit more, yielding a little more impact. Jump squats, split jumps, burpees. I don't do them a lot when you have your uh, lateral bench hops. It does help, it's helpful to have a bench. And then you have your skater hops, right? We've incorporated those more over the last couple weeks. Plyometrics. Remember, this is on you, right? And again, mobility, standing scissors, standing runners, jack the lanes are all great choices. Again, I hope you're a little ahead of me because I've been talking a lot. <laughs> Shocker. Round three, 15 shoulders. Remember, the burn is gonna be high. Your exertion doesn't take very long. That's why I wanna call this a wake up circuit. Let's get the body going. The trap rows burned, but we started with a 30 because of what the combos were. The shoulders are burning because the combo is very short. Remember, you could do agility, quick, quick, quick. You could do plyometrics, power, power, power. You could do mobility, movement, 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 right? Round three is 15 on your shoulders and then 20 on your exertion. Round four, you don't have to be there, but 10 on your shoulders, and then again, 20 on your exertion. Let's work, let's work, let's work. When this circuit's done, we'll have a different oblique to do on the ground. The next circuit will be our lats and our glutes. Then we'll do another oblique, and we'll see what time it is and see if we have any more time. Remember, Circuit one was pulling shoulders, deltoid raises, right? We had all the calves in there. This circuit is pushing shoulders. You get your upper traps and your deltoids. Of course, you do get some triceps in there. And then you have this exertion, so you have a nice good burn. You had your trap rows done. We have lat pullovers to do. Round four is 10 shoulders, 20 exertion. Round five is five shoulders. And then again, one more 20 exertion. So you guys know these things, you know my style, you know what we do, it's why you're here. Turn that dial up a tiny bit. After your round five of five shoulders and 20 exertion, we will be on the ground for a while with our obliques and then our lats and our glutes.
Big deep breath again. Nice job. Hopefully it woke you up a little bit. Didn't want to lull you back to sleep. We had a decent warm up. Wasn't too crazy. Again, we have the shoulders and calves, your back and quads, and maybe it felt like we were going down. We turn it back up. When you're ready, we're gonna be on the ground. I would love hip dips. If you can't do hip dips, you can repeat your double lateral leg lifts or your standing obliques if you want to, because when the next circuit's over, we'll do our side crunches. 30 each side on your hip dips. It is the only pushing oblique exercise. The downside of your body is pushing your body up. The kicker is your elbow, your shoulder, and your neck, right? Try to find a comfortable position. I see a lot of people that get that elbow really high, and then they overcompensate and get the elbow too low. You wanna get that elbow under your shoulder. And then if you have a slight knee bend, although there is a little mobility of hips and spine, I'm not gonna label it as a mobility exercise. Definitely an activation exercise. 30 each side hip dips. Breathe, focus, work. Wednesday morning. It might be your last workout of the year. It might not be your last workout of the year. That's up to you. 30 each side obliques when you get done again i don't really stare at the clock much but i do see it but it will be our last circuit of your lats and our glutes it has some duration to it and then all we have to do is do one more oblique at the end and again i always have what i want and then we actually get to doing it for the circuits today monday you have a two big circuit in the ab core middle right when we get there your lat pullovers we've done before. I wanna keep the numbers simple. You've got five sets of a rep range of 12 to 15. I'll take 12, I'll take 13, I'll take 14, I'll take 15. Maybe you're laying on the ground, maybe you're laying on a ball, maybe you're laying on a bench on your lat pullovers. And of course, if you have the tools, you have lat pull downs. 12 to 15 is your rep range. I am gonna give you the different glutes. We're going to do a right hip bridge, a left hip bridge, a both feet regular, a both feet wide, and a both feet narrow, right? So I am going to give you the always 20 glutes, okay? So there is a little diversity. When you're ready, 12 to 15 lat pullovers, whether you're laying on the ground, ball, or bench, you've done lat pullovers before. I don't want tricep extensions. So your arms are not perfectly straight. They're slightly bent, but they don't bend and straighten. You reach as far as you can reach above your head. And remember, if you're elevated on something, you might have a little more motion. Be mindful to that. 12 to 15 is your rep range. I'll take anything between the two numbers. And that's based on your motion, your position, your weight, your focus, all those things. Five sets of lat pullovers. And I'm going to give you five different hip bridges trying to get your glutes. But they're all going to be 20. Round one, left leg is either over right. That's how I like to do them. Or you can do a pistol hip bridge, and that means your left leg is out in front. I lose hip mobility when I do that. When I cross my left leg over right, I do get more motion. So personally, if I'm trying to get my glute, I would do the best, biggest motion. If we're talking about activation and balance and not focusing on your glutes, focusing on your core, then yeah, the pistol hip bridge is great. There's a lot of components, but I lose that glute activation. Remember, your foot can be up on something or not. You can have weight on your hips or not. Right hip bridge 20. Now, just because I'm controlling the circuit a little bit doesn't mean you have to wait for me. Round one, 12 to 15 lap pullovers. 20 right hip bridges. Round two is 
12 to 15 lap pullovers, and 20 left hip bridges. Lap pullovers. It can be a really heavy, loaded exercise. If you Google or Bing it, you'll see a lot of different weights and a lot of different body positions. You'll see people with super heavy weight and their elbows are a lot more bent, but you need to watch their elbows. They don't bend and straighten their elbows. Okay, so your elbows are not bending or straightening. They stay in whatever spot they're going to stay in. You, you go online, you'll see somebody with a 100 pound dumbbell, and they're gonna have the elbow bent a little bit more. They're gonna be laying sideways on the bench, right? You'll see all these different body positions. Lat pullovers is all about the lengthening of the contracted lat, and then the rotation associated to the lat. Round two, 12, 15 lat pullovers, 20 on your left hip ridge, hips are moving a ton. Glutes are turning on. Breathe. Your foot could be elevated. Your hips could be weighted. Breathe and focus. 20 left hip bridges. Remember, I'm gonna control the glutes. This is our last circuit. Round three is your 12 to 15 lap pullovers. And then you'll do both feet regular position, like your regular squat, like your regular wall sit, like your regular leg press, okay? Round four is your wide stance. Round five is your narrow stance. So all you're doing is changing your feet on your hip bridge. Your lats are a rep range of 12 to 15. And I'll remind you when we get closer of that last oblique exercise. Your circuit, lap pullovers, is one of the longer motion exercises. There is a long, focused, lengthening component on the lap pullover, like a stiff-legged deadlift, like a windshield wiper, like a chest fly. They have longer, more focused, lengthening components. If you don't focus, you're going to hurt yourself. Round three, remember your hips can be weighted, your feet can be higher, both feet shoulder width apart on your hip bridge. That regular feet position, your feet are shoulder width apart. Hips, glutes, breathing, focus. And guess what, it's Wednesday the 30th of December, you better squeeze your glutes. Please, I know they have nothing to do with each other, but might as well. Squeeze your glutes. Again, round three is your lap pullover with your regular feet with hip bridge. Round four is your wide feet hip bridge. Round five is your narrow feet. And then all you have to do is a one more oblique exercise. Fifteen reps. Definitely still in the strength category. There's true strength, getting used to load, right? You're getting stronger, and then there's strength endurance. So those two numbers yield strength. How strong can you be? How much load can you handle? And how long can you handle it? Those are the 12 to 15 numbers. When you get up to that 20, 25, and 30, that's all about that muscle endurance. You do get strong by all means, but your strength curve changes and it turns into that good muscle burn. Round four, wide hip bridges. Your feet are wider than your regular position. Everybody has a different wide. Your calves wanna help out in that wide 
stance. So try to eliminate your calves. It might feel like your glutes deactivate, but I promise you, if you are squeezing them mentally and physically, your glutes are working. Round five will be the narrow hip bridge. It's a very strong glute position. Your hamstrings and quads would love to help out. I know it's weird to say quads in the position, so you gotta really think about your glutes. Last round, 12 to 15 lap pullovers. You got your narrow stance hip bridge, and then all you have to do at the end is lay on your back. You'll have your knees to one side and do your side crunches, 30 reps each side. For me and for you guys, it's a great flexibility, mobility, activation exercise to finish off your day. So again, Monday and today, lower intensity, a lot of lifting. Clearly tomorrow and Friday, we can turn it up a tiny bit. <clears throat> Shoulder blades are back and down. A lot of movement at your shoulder joints. Mobility of shoulder joints, right? The shoulder joint is moving, reaching as far as you can reach safely, and then contract those lats, and you're pulling the weight above your head. Lat pullovers and tricep extensions, they get muddy quite a bit. Don't bend and straighten your elbows on a lat pullover. I know when you get back to the gym and the first day you do your lats, your lat pull downs, you will be sore. You haven't done them in a while. Narrow hip bridge will be the end of circuit. Feet are narrow on your narrow stance hip bridge. And then the last thing, lay on your back, knees to your left is your right side crunch. Mobility of hips and spine. Flexibility of the muscle around your hips and spine. And it's a good oblique activator. It burns, but I'm not gonna say it's your best oblique. I want you to incorporate them a little bit more if you don't do them very often. It is good for the flexibility and mobility of your hips and spine. Thirty right oblique side crunch. Thirty. Left oblique side crunch. I know the tempo intensity is low. When you push the off button, I still want you to cool off and stretch out and go nourish your body and soul. But if you do have time and energy, five to 10 minutes of cardio isn't gonna kill you. A good sweat after a workout like this is always good for fat burning, if you wanna call it that. Your body is never more efficient than it is right now. You can nourish it, you can stretch it, you can sweat it. Whatever you do now, your body will thank you. And when you get done, have a great day. I promise you all get a message on what times, but we'll probably do noon tomorrow, the last workout of the year, Thursday the 31st, and we'll do a nine and noon class on Friday, New Year's Day, the first workout of the year.